Welcome to this tutorial on uh, linear interpolation or lerping. Uh, so what is linear interpolation? Well, you may have heard it in regards to moving some block or object from one point to another smoothly over time. Uh, so we can imagine we have some object and some goal position uh, and we move from here to here uh, over time smoothly. Uh, and so this example is in two dimensions, uh, but if we add time into the mix, that makes it three-dimensional, which makes it a lot harder to visualize or draw. Uh, so I'm going to work with a one-dimensional example using the real number line and uh, walk you through it. So if we have our real number line here, 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, uh, we can have some value which linearly interpolates between uh, some number to some other number. So uh, let's say we're going to move from 1 to 3. Uh, well, we can graph this interpolation uh, in a regular graph if we put our value on the x-axis, or on the y-axis, and our time in seconds on the x-axis. And so if we say this interpolation takes 10 seconds, then we can graph it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, 1, 2, 3. So uh, we know that at 0 seconds, uh, at the start of our interpolation, our value is going to equal 1 because that's our starting point. So we can plot that point right here. And we know that our goal is 3, which means at the end of our interpolation, at 10 seconds, our value is going to be 3. So what we can do is we can graph the point 10, 3 right here. And then we can just draw a straight line from point 1 to point 2. Uh, because what we're doing is linear interpolation, and that means constant change or constant slope, which means this is a straight line from our starting value to our goal value, uh, which makes it a lot simpler. And so uh, what we can do is, using this graph, we can find our value at a certain time. So let's say f we want to find our value at 5 seconds into our interpolation. Well, if we look at the graph, we can see at 5 seconds our value is 2. Uh, and that makes sense because uh, 5 is halfway through our interpolation because 5 is half of 10. Uh, and 2 is halfway through our interpolation because 2 is halfway between 1 and 3. Uh, so what does this look like mathematically? Well, our general formula for our linear interpolation is, uh, uh, it looks like this. So if we let a equal our starting value or position, and b equal our goal value or position, uh, and alpha equal our time value or our percentage of the way through our interpolation we are, uh, then the formula looks like this. Uh, it's a plus b minus a times alpha. And so uh, I'm going to walk you through an example of uh, using this formula. So if we let alpha equal uh, 0 0.5 or 1 half, we can uh, uh, substitute that into our formula, like so. So a plus b minus a times 0 0.5. Uh, and if we apply this uh, 0 0.5 into the uh, brackets, what we get is a plus uh, b over 2 minus a over 2. And uh, we know a minus a over 2 is equal to a over 2. Uh, so we can say this is equal to a over 2 plus b over 2, or a plus b over 2. Uh, and this is our average 
of the values a and b. Uh, and so uh, why is it that? Well, halfway through our transformation from uh, pointer value a to b would be the average of those two points. Uh, and so since 0 0.5 is our 50%, uh, we get our average when we plug that into our formula. So uh, now why does this formula work? Well, uh, if we think about this in a more abstract or in, in a less like mathematical strict way, we can think uh, with with just logic. Uh, we have our start position uh, or value plus our goal minus our start times this alpha. Uh, and so what this means is we have uh, we have our start plus our total change and we're multiplying that by our desired change. So uh, this is our desired amount of change here in our alpha position uh, or in our in our alpha variable. So uh, this is, uh, if we want to change 50% of the way, that's 0 0.5. If you want to change no amount of the way, that's 0. And if we want to change all the way, that's 1. Uh, so uh, logically, if we multiply our desired change by our total change, we'll get the amount of change uh, that we want. So um, if we want to go 50% of the total change, then we'll get half of the total change. Uh, and the reason we have, uh, we're adding start here uh, is because start is acting as our origin of this transformation. Uh, so let's, uh, let's take a look at it in action in Roblox Studio. Uh, so uh, I just have an empty base plate here with a script and uh, what we're going to do is define a lerp function, uh, which takes our start, our goal, and our alpha. And uh, it's going to return our formula here, so start plus goal minus start times alpha. And uh, we can print the uh, return value of this function, uh, given three numbers. So uh, we could say if we want to go from 0 to 3 and we want to go 0% of the way, uh, we know this is going to print our starting value or 0. And if we want to go 100% of the way, this is going to print our goal value or 3. If we want to go halfway, then we're going to get halfway between 0 and 3. Uh, so this all makes sense and this works, but what if I want a smooth transition rather than just some arbitrary number? Well, what we can do is we can put this in a for loop that looks like this. So we can say uh, for i equals 1, 100 do, and we can assign a variable alpha to equal our uh, incrementing value divided by uh, this total value. Uh, so what this does is uh, as we iterate through uh, this for, uh, through this loop, we're going to get our alpha value to be the percentage of the way through the loop we are. So the first time we go through, it's going to be 1 over 100, then 2 over 100, 3 over 100. Halfway through, it's going to be 50 over 100, or 0 0.5. And when we're done, it's going to be 100 over 100, or 1, 100%. Uh, so if we print our lerp here from 1 to 10, let's say, at alpha, uh, and we wait, then what we're going to get is a smooth transition from the point or from the value 1 to the value 10. Uh, and if we run this, then you can see exactly that. We're getting a, a smooth number, so 7, 8, 9, 10. A uh, smooth transition from 1 to 10. Uh, and so we can apply this knowledge to uh, objects in space. So. Uh, let's say we have a few parts here. We have part A, part B, 
and part C. Uh, what we can do is uh, get into our code and lerp our C object between the position of A and B. And so how we would do that is uh, actually not using our lerp function because uh, Roblox has a built-in lerp method uh, with vector3 and C frames. Uh, so if we define our A, our B, and our C, then uh, we can use the same for loop uh, and the same definition of alpha and then we can use Roblox's ler own lerp methods to uh, move our part C. So uh, C dot position equals A dot position, which is our start. Lerp B dot position, which is our goal, uh, and give it our alpha. And if we throw a weight in here, what this is going to do is this is going to set C's position to uh, the point between A's position to B's position. Uh, using our alpha value. So this is going to smoothly move C between A and B uh, over time. And if we run this, we can see C moving smoothly between A and B. Uh, and so um, that is pretty much uh, our basic application of linear interpolation in Roblox. So if you want to use this uh, it works uh, also with C frames. So if we set this to C frame instead of position, uh, it'll work the same, uh, but it won't uh, push the object up. But uh, basically, that's how you use linear interpolation.